Hi, folks. I'm Ben Summers. Welcome to this Ignite on-demand session about Microsoft Graph Services. To get started, let's take a quick look at the agenda. We're going to start with a quick overview of Microsoft Graph for those of you watching who aren't familiar with it. And from there, we're going to get into the real substance of this talk, Microsoft Graph Services. As we discuss specific examples of Microsoft Graph Services, my colleagues, Hamad Ajub and James Lau, will join me. Hamad's going to talk about all the good things going on in the security and compliance space, while James is going to talk about Microsoft Graph Connectors. So let's get started. Perhaps the simplest way to describe Microsoft Graph is this. Microsoft Graph is the Microsoft 365 data that describes the patterns of productivity, identity, and security in an organization accessed through a unified API endpoint. Now, you see, Microsoft Graph data is what we use at Microsoft to power the experiences that we create everywhere in our products. Graph is what helps us create so much of that shared richness, context, and content that makes your workday easier, safer, more focused, more seamless, and ultimately more productive across the devices that you use, whether they're running Windows, iOS, or Android. So, so what's cool is that we offer developers secure access to those same data sets through a standards-based public API, graph.microsoft.com, which actually extends to dozens, hundreds actually, of data sets that power first-party experiences in Office, in Intune, in Windows, in Dynamics. It's basically the API to your organization, and we extend it to the developer community through Microsoft Graph API. But as I mentioned earlier, as I was reviewing our agenda, this talk is actually about Microsoft Graph services. You see, we're not just talking about data sets anymore. We're starting to think about how we can further extend the capabilities of our platform to help developers build new kinds of high value applications. So we're looking past the well-known boundaries of Microsoft Graph to places like our enterprise scale infrastructure with its proven capacity to scale securely to tens of millions or even hundreds of millions of users, or the capabilities that we've built into our products and refined over the years. For example, search or e-discovery, or even the tools that can help your organization extend its data to our best-in-class services, again, like search or e-discovery. And of course, to the capability to extract data at scale to perform analysis and gain valuable insights into the pattern of work. So, We've done a lot of thinking about the different kinds of services that we can offer to you to help you build new value into your solutions and the kinds of building blocks that you're going to need for the next generation of great productivity apps and integrations. In this session, then, we're going to look at three examples of how we're not just envisioning, but actually building Microsoft Graph services. We'll start by looking at a new set of communication services built on top of Microsoft 365 infrastructure. We'll look at examples of a set of security and compliance capabilities that we're now exposing to developers through the Microsoft Graph. And then finally, we'll take a look at tools, specifically search connectors, that you can use to bring your data into our best-in-class enterprise search services. So I'm going to stay with you all for a few more minutes to talk about communication services. Specifically, I'm excited to introduce Azure Communication Services, which if you've watched some of the other keynotes or mechanics sessions, you'll know is now available in public preview. Azure Communication Services is a set of rich communications APIs that you can integrate into your applications. But before we get into the details, let's pause to consider what's happening here. We're taking Microsoft infrastructure. Here, that is the underlying infrastructure that supports our own Microsoft Teams voice, video, SMS, chat, and WebRTC capabilities, and we're exposing it as an Azure service to enable consumption of secure, compliant, encrypted communication services that, as a developer, you can use to build communications workflows and apps on any platform, web, Windows, iOS, or Android, using either our APIs or our new ACS SDK. And because we're surfacing it as an Azure tool, the billing and management for your app's use of these communication services is consolidated with the rest of your app's Azure infrastructure. 
At the highest level, these services have two sets of components. The first set of components is administrative. You'll need to create and define your resources, connections, and user access parameters. And then the second set of parameters, simply it defines the way in which those users may communicate. In other words, using any combination of video chat, WebRTC, or SMS services that I just mentioned. Now, we've built a mock-up of an experience powered by ACS. In this case, it's a telehealth portal. I should state right off the bat that one of the notable things about using these APIs is that they're largely identity agnostic. You can use a variety of identity providers to authenticate your users' experiences. For example, you can use Azure Active Directory, of course. You can use Facebook, Twitter, or Google, or others. Now, I'm gonna log into the portal under the pretense that I've got a whopping toothache after biting into an unpopped corn kernel while watching a movie with my wife over the weekend. And I've made an appointment at the care uh, to get the care process started. Now, this is an entirely web-based experience, but it can work across platforms and devices. Now, once I've logged in, I can see the typical features of a healthcare portal, links to practice areas, as well as personalized content, including on the left, my dentists and my appointments. But what we're here to see is actually that I have an appointment to talk to a dentist starting in just a few minutes. Now, right away, I can start my appointment by simply chatting with the dentist. Uh, and after a quick exchange of pleasantries, it becomes clear that the best thing that the dentist can do to assess the situation remotely is to actually see me. So upon request, uh, we can transition from a text call to a video call where I can see the dentist and the dentist can see that I'm in considerable discomfort, uh, which helps him evaluate whether or not I should come in for an examination in person or simply treat my toothache with other means. So what I've shown you here is pretty simple, but it's also powerful, right? It's an experience powered by Microsoft 365 infrastructure offered to developers as an Azure building block for any application. And you can make it better with communication services on just about any platform. And note that Soon will also offer the ability to connect these experiences back into Microsoft Teams calls so that organizations using Teams can seamlessly extend those calls beyond their organization's boundaries with the promise that those services remain managed and billed within Microsoft's cloud infrastructure. But all this is just a teaser. What we really want is for you to get your hands on the tech and to start playing around. To do this, we recommend the following. First, check out the other sessions on this topic, in particular, Digital Breakout 121. Second, uh, look at attending an Ask the Expert session. There are two scheduled in different time zones. And, and finally, we've got a site where you can check out where you'll find documentation, quick starts, and access to the new SDK, everything you really need to get started building your first solution. Now, that's just the first example of a graph service that we're sharing. Time for me to turn this over to Hamad. Thank you, Ben. Super excited to be here. And thank you all for joining us for this session. Let's start with our vision and approach to compliance ecosystem. It's an exciting journey for us, and I'm glad to share it with you all. Our customers and partners want and need our compliance platform to be extensible. That's why we've based our approach to building compliance ecosystem on five key pillars. These pillars enable you to adapt Microsoft compliance solutions to meet your unique needs, extend Microsoft compliance solutions to non-Microsoft data, integrate with third-party systems to create seamless workflows, accelerate deployment and management at scale, and last but not the least, support your existing investments in third-party security, and last but not the least, support your existing investments in third-party security and compliance offerings. We will demo this today. To implement this vision, today we are very excited to announce our key investment areas. To enable our partners to reason over their entire data landscape, including Microsoft and non-Microsoft systems, we are extending our data connector platform and enabling ready-to-use built-in partner-built connectors. To enable system-level integrations, we're doubling down on our investments in APIs. We have exciting news. We have exciting news on new graph APIs, as well as several enhancements in Microsoft Information Protection SDK. To meet unique needs of our customers, we are also investing in built-in customizations. We are announcing Power Automate templates for insider risk and communication compliance scenarios. 
Let's switch gears and talk about APIs. One of the key asks from our customers and partners is for APIs that enable integration of our compliance solutions with existing applications and services. And to unlock this potential, we're announcing three new Microsoft Graph APIs. At the very high level, Graph APIs for Teams DLP enables third-party applications to leverage data loss prevention capabilities for Microsoft Teams. This is now generally available for developers. Graph API for Teams Explorer enables third-party applications to provide enterprise information archival for Microsoft Teams. This is in public preview for developers. Graph API for eDiscovery enables workflow automations and third-party application integration scenarios. This is also in public preview for developers. And of course, we are continuing to invest in our existing capabilities, such as Microsoft Information Protection SDK, which has added a number of new capabilities and hit the version 1.7 milestone. Office 365 Management Activity API also continues to add new actions and events that can be used in a variety of ways. Let's talk about Microsoft Graph APIs for Teams DLP first. Data loss prevention capabilities are widely used in Microsoft Teams, particularly as organizations have shifted to remote work. Earlier this year, we announced the public preview of the Change Notification API for Messages in Teams. This API enables developers to build apps that can listen to Microsoft Teams messages in near real time to enable DLP scenario implementations. That is true for both customers and ISVs. Additionally, Patch API allows applying DLP actions to Teams messages. Together, these two APIs form the Microsoft Graph API for Teams DLP. And today, we are very excited to announce the general availability of these APIs. Let's do a quick demo and see what these APIs are all about. In today's demo, we are going to see how you can configure Teams DLP policies in a third-party context. That is McAfee's Envision Cloud and use change notification APIs to capture, capture messages in real time. And use change notification APIs to capture messages in real time. You will also see how a patch API is used to apply DLP actions as and when there is a policy match. First things first, what we really need to do is to enable tenant level access for Microsoft Teams. Once that is done, you can see that API is connected and the notifications start flowing in. Here's how the DLP policy is created for credit card number and social security numbers. You can go in and you can configure those details here. Here's how the DLP policy is created for credit card numbers and social security number. So now chain notification APIs can be used to scan for this policy violation. As and when this policy violation happens, we can configure what actions do we want to take via our patch API. In this case, we have configured to lead, in this case, we have configured to delete those messages that contain social security number and or credit card numbers and notify someone in SOC. From an end user perspective, you can see that there's a collaboration happening at our fictional NG bank where Bob is working with an external partner to create a cryptocurrency. It's all going well until Bob mistakenly sends his social security number, which, which was meant to be shared with Sara from HR. DLP policy gets a hit and the message is blocked and deleted, plus the sender is notified and why this was blocked. These notifications also gets captured in policy incidents from a SOC perspective. And with that, you have seen that how we can use chain notification APIs to capture real-time Microsoft Teams messages and also be able to apply DLP actions using the patch API. Advanced eDiscovery helps customers to quickly find relevant data to respond to their legal and regulatory needs. Advanced eDiscovery APIs are currently available in public preview and support creating and managing of three major types of resources, cases, review sets, and review set queries. These APIs enable customers to build apps that can automate common and repetitive processes. This automation creates a repeatable, predictable, and consistent process to reduce potential human error. Lastly, eDiscovery APIs can also be used for integrating Microsoft's advanced eDiscovery with third-party ISP solutions. For more details, please check our graph scaling video on advanced eDiscovery. Let's talk about Teams Export API. 
Enterprise Information Archival for Microsoft Teams is a key scenario for our customers as it allows them to solve for retention, indexing, e-discovery, classification, as well as regulatory requirements. Although we have built-in archiving capabilities in our compliance platform, our customers and partners need these APIs to solve for custom applications and integration scenarios. That's where Teams Export API comes in. Teams Export API enables message archiving and support of bulk export of Teams messages, including message attachments. Deleted messages are also accessible via API up to 30 days from deletion. Microsoft Graph APIs for Teams Export are now available in public preview for developers. To learn about Microsoft compliance investments in APIs and extensibility, please visit our video hub, read our blog post, and get hands-on with our APIs and connectors. Thanks again, and with that, over to you, James. Thanks, Hamad. Hey, everyone. My name is James Lau, and I'm the product lead for Graph Connectors. It's my privilege today to share with you an overview of Graph Connectors, why you might want to build one, and how you go about getting started. With that, let's jump right in. Graph connectors are apps that you can build to bring any external data into the Microsoft Graph. You can develop a connector for your own organization, bringing in data that users in your organization care about. Or if you're building a product for your customers who also use Microsoft 365, you can bring content from your product into Microsoft Graph through connectors. By bringing in external content through connectors, you can have them deeply integrated into M365 experiences to increase discoverability and user engagement with that content. Let me give you a few examples. Microsoft Search is our intelligent search solution for the modern workplace. It's the search platform that powers search endpoints across M365, including SharePoint, Office.com, Bing, and more. External data brought in through graph connectors can be surfaced through Microsoft Search. That means your data can benefit from all the search innovations we're making around relevance, advanced search features, and enable M365 users to easily find your content, even when they're not in your product experience. When they click on a search result from your content, they can be launched immediately into your product experience so you can instantly re-engage with them. In this example, you can see how GoOne, who is one of the leaders in online learning, has built a graph connector and is making their learning content available through Microsoft Search. Across Microsoft 365, we have multiple places where we show what we call intelligent discovery experiences. In these experiences, we show you what's trending and what's the most relevant to you based on your activities, signals, and relationships with others. These experiences appear in Delve, Office.com, and on the default new tab in Edge. Through Graph Connector, your content can participate in these experiences. Next is Project Cortex. You have probably been hearing a lot about Project Cortex lately because it's our brand new offering in knowledge management. One of its key superpowers is that it is able to infer what are key topics in your organization by analyzing content within your organization. With graph connectors, the data that you bring in will be able to participate in the AI-generated topic cards and topic pages to bring you a more holistic view of topics and the related resources in your organization. The last example I will give is people experiences. Across M365, when you click on someone's name, you will find different flavors of people profile cards. With connectors, you will be able to fill in user profile properties with values from your data source, add new custom fields, and also have your content participate in the files tab within the profile cards. Now, this is the super exciting part for me. I'm thrilled to announce that graph connectors will be generally available in Q4 of 2020. Data brought in through graph connectors will initially be lit up for search with other experiences to follow. 
I'm also excited to announce that we have eight partners launching with us. They include key leaders in the solution space, Accenture, BA Insight, Rayshon, and Cognizant, and also leaders in the product space, Adobe, Box, GoOne, and LumApps. Altogether, these partners are building over 100 graph connectors, and these connectors will either be ready from day one for production, or they will be ready within a few months. We're honored to have these amazing companies as our launch partners. Now let's shift gears a bit, and I'd like to quickly give you an overview of what's involved in building a graph connector. At a high level, a connector is simply an application that performs a one-way synchronization of content and ACLs from a data source into the Microsoft Graph. There are three API calls that you need to know about when building a graph connector. First, you will need to create a connection. This is a very simple call, and I will just highlight the graph endpoint for you here. You just pass in an ID, name, and description for this call. Next, you will need to call create schema for the connection that you just created. In the body of this call, you define the schema, which is the list of properties that each item I ingest later will have. For each property, you define the property's name, data type, and a set of optional behaviors and labels for that property. Okay, now that you have created the connection and created the schema for that connection, you can call create external item to start adding items into that connection. You do that by calling put into this endpoint. Note that you can use any IDs you want, and quite commonly, this could come from your data source. In the body of this API call, there are three sections. The first one is the ACLs section, which allows you to specify the access control lists of this item. The next one is the property section, where you specify the properties, and this should adhere to the schema that you have defined for this connection. The last section is the content section, Anything you put here will automatically be added to the full text index. So in summary, the three API calls that you need to know about when building a graph connector is create connection, create schema, and create external item. And obviously I skipped over a lot of details and that was probably the quickest overview that I could have done. To get deeper in learning about how to build your graph connector, please tune into our other session, PR205. You can also learn more about graph connectors and APIs through these AKA MS links. Now with that, let me turn it back over to Ben. Thanks, James. To wrap things up, I wanna say thanks to both Hamad and James and congratulate them for bringing such cool products to market. We are really excited to see how our partners and customers adopt these new services. And of course, we also want feedback on their features, their performance, and frankly, whatever else we need to know to help improve them for your use. Now, before I go, I can't forget to go over the set of, let's call them essential resources that we have for the developer community. First, we've got developer boot camps held around the world virtually. They run from the 1st of October through the end of November. They're organized by leaders from within and around the Microsoft engineering community, and one is likely happening in your neck of the woods. Second, we've got formal training and certification in Microsoft 365 development now. Topics include Microsoft Graph, Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Identity, SharePoint Framework, Office add-ins, and more. And then finally, there's the Microsoft 365 developer program. If you're a developer, you can find all the tools and resources you'll need, including my own favorite feature, a renewable Microsoft 365 E5 subscription with easy to load sets of sample data. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for attending Ignite 2020. And as always, happy coding.